We would like to introduce um, Dr. Jeremy Rogers, who is going to uh, teach us a little bit about how to make SNOMED CT work. I hope by the end of this, you won't be uh, moving us to tears. Um, <laughs> uh, good morning. Um, that's nice and loud and clear. Uh, so uh, hold on to your hats. We have 28 minutes to explain um, how to do SNOMED. Um, I'm actually going to focus more on how not to do SNOMED, um, because in 28 minutes, that's probably more important. Um, but before I um, say how hard it can be, I'd like to just prove that it can be useful. Um, so one UK A&E department has been collecting SNOMED codes um, for some years now. Um, and between uh, the first three years or so of operation, they had 420 odd thousand attendances and those attendees were each given one reason code as to why they came and it was given using SNOMED natively. And over the first three years between them, um, cast of a thousands of uh, relatively untrained uh, clinicians, nurses, whoever, they used about 12,000 different SNOMED codes at least once, many of them many times more than once. The runaway winner was soft tissue injury, um, but quite a few of them just the once. Um, and over those first three years, um, the blue line is the total numbers of patients coming each month. And we can see the solid black line is a smoothed average, showing a fairly relentless and steady increase even a decade ago. So that by the end of the three years, they were seeing roughly 10% more patients. Um, today, it's about 30% more patients than they were at the beginning of this slide. So um, a hot topic then, and even more now, is you know, where has this come from? Um, and so we looked at the SNOMED data that came out the back of this machine um, and it's possible after a certain amount of dreaming to narrow down that increase to just 36 codes out of the 12,000 that were selected account for about two thirds of that increase. Um, and so if in the background gone out grey is the slide of the graph that you saw before of the total numbers of patients, that red line is the, the chart showing the numbers of patients coming with one of those 36 specific SNOMED codes. And if we take those out of the equation and count the other 11,900 and whatever it is codes, you get this line, which is not quite flat, but about 90% of the coding activity or the clinical conditions given one of those 12,000 codes is broadly speaking static. So that would suggest that the reason that the, um, the, the graph had gone up overall by 10% isn't to do with population growth, for example, because you'd expect that to be across the board. So what's going on? If you look deeper at the 36 um, codes, as a clinician, I look at those and think, well, actually, there's a little bit of a thread. There's quite a lot of pain in the background, but we also can see quite a lot of codes to do with various flavors of cardiovascular accidents. So if we step back from that view of 36 and ask a more general question of what has happened to patients coming with any kind of stroke, not just the ones here, but all the other more detailed subtypes, or transient ischemic episode, all that kind of stuff, what do we get? And we get this graph, which is even more interesting, big step. Not a lot happening in the first 18 months, almost doubled almost overnight, um, and then went up beyond that. Uh, it took me quite a long time to work out why this was. Um, the department, interestingly, looking back, um, couldn't explain this effect. Uh, but I worked it out last week, actually, when I read, read this item from um, the BBC which pointed out that in 2010, London reorganised its stroke management services and there were eight hubs that took all referrals and this site was one of them. So we can see the effect of that policy in the SNOMED coding. So it can work, but it also can very easily be made not to work and, and sad to say, being a bit of an Eeyore character this morning, I'm going to focus a little bit more on that. So there are a bunch of technical need to knows which are quite different um, from for those of you who are more familiar perhaps with the secondary care classifications, ICD, OPCS. Um, in no particular order, there are quite, some quite detailed requirements for construction of browsers, uh, and we'll come on to why in a minute. Um, there are some uh, unexpected gotchas. Um, so it become clear later on, SNOMED codes are variable length, um, and a lot of the howling and screaming that we've had in the past has been from suppliers saying, but I can't cope with a data type that's not a fixed length. Um, but they are, they are between eight roughly and a maximum of 18 digits long. They are 64-bit identifiers, which is interesting when you drop that data into Microsoft Excel, uh, which is the go-to analytics tool for the health service, sad to say, uh, which implements a different ISO standard which says that if you give me a number, I will only store it to 15 digits of precision. So every single SNOMED code 
with 18 characters in it is not truncated. The last three digits are changed to a zero if you drop it into Excel, unless you tell Excel it's a text data type, um, which a lot of people forget. Uh, Excel is the enemy of all terminologists and classifications and coding people because it has uh, an unerring uh, capacity to screw up your data, whether you're doing it um, in SNOMED, OPCS, ICD, read, genetics, lots of people moan about it. So we don't have time to go into um, that area. Um, I'm kind of guessing that a lot of the audience are secondary care and classification experienced. Um, if there's anybody here from primary care, um, I apologize a bit. Um, but I just wanted to sort of spell out to those who are not really sure what is the difference between coding in SNOMED versus coding in some of the more friendly um, technologies. So one of the um, paradigms that I was explained many moons ago was to think of classifications as being more like a phrase book. When you go on holiday, there's a bunch of phrase books. Some of them have more phrases than others. But searching through them for the phrase that most accurately approximates what you really would like to say if you could speak the language is not a pleasant experience. Um, so you can pick up one of these in the Russian um, how to say I've got something in my eye. Um, the other characteristics of classifications is their normal mode of use is to describe or summarize, really, a finished episode of care after the patient has left to count stuff after it's happened. Uh, and as we saw yesterday in Dyer's presentation, they're typically organized into monoaxial trees, can't be in, more, in two places at once. You can't be both in the respiratory diseases chapter or infectious diseases chapter um, or the neurology chapter. Stemmed CT and other things like it, it's not the only one of its kind, offer ultimately more of a grammar and a lexicon approach. So they're trying to enable you to speak the language. So that if you want to say, I've got something sharp in my left lower eyelid, you can. It's also more particularly aiming at describing the current state of one particular patient. They're not fundamentally about analyzing vast swathes of activity. Um, and in particular, the way that the codes are organized and the way the machine is enabled to compare different sentences, if you like, is in this very deep poly hierarchy where things can have not just two or three or sometimes five, six, seven different parents, depending on the analytical question you want to ask. It's also not confined to procedures or diseases. Um, whereas ICD is just morbidity and OPCS is just procedures, SNEMED is both of those and quite a bit more. And that's both a benefit and a problem. But fundamentally, SNOMED is for this thing. So many of the slides yesterday looked at interoperability as being about moving the meaning of the record between two human beings through a machine, possibly between geographic locations. SNOMED is fundamentally in the spirit of how do we represent information to pass it between the human and the machine so it can help with this problem. Um, because the medical conceit, if you will, is that we can reliably match the stack of paper on the right to the one on the left without error in real time. But there is, of course, many a catch. The interoperability elephant, one of many, is the old garbage in, garbage out adage. And we know that current near patient coded data, which UK primary care is perhaps um, the richest example, is often low quality. And that's being um, uh, sort of conservative with the words, shall we say. Um, <coughs> There is frequent missed and miscoding, picking the wrong codes. In the read codes, we offer, I forget, two or 3,000 codes to record a patient's occupation um, in primary care. And they are almost never used, with the exception of the codes for midwife, speech therapist, physiotherapist, and a bunch of other actors in the uh, primary care team. Um, so we might surmise that at least a few of those are probably intended to be, I've referred the patient to one of these people, not they are one of these people. Uh, my practice when I was a GP trainee, I think in one year there were 900 physiotherapists, allegedly. <coughs> um, so SNOMED CT, one of its design properties is to address this, to give us more of a handle, more techniques to guide people away from the wrong choices and towards the right ones. But if you ignore that capability, Generally speaking, you will make data quality considerably worse. So if you return back to our A&E department, in amongst their raw data um, were these codes and these counts. Um, so th um, in red, spot. Um, so I'm pretty certain when they put this code in, they had in their mind that thing on the left, 
why the patient had turned up to A&E with that is a whole other question, but that's probably what they meant. What they couldn't see because of the way the browser was constructed was the, that text string in Snowbird is attached to this concept, which is a freshwater fish that lives in the uh, eastern United States rivers. <laughs> and at the bottom, in red, they would picked AAA, popular clinical acronym for abdominal aortic aneurysm, life-threatening condition, not that common. What they couldn't see was that that unadulterated raw three-character string had been linked only to the code for AAA, a manufacturer of a single product. It's an anesthetic throat spray. AAA doesn't stand for anything. I think they just picked that name to get themselves at the top of the trade directory. <laughs> Similarly, RTA, almost certainly road traffic accident, but in SNOMED of the day, that was attached to renal tubular acidosis. So that's an even more serious miscode. They had picked a diagnosis, as it happens, but the wrong one. So why do we have all these pieces that are in there to mislead people and get the wrong codes? Um, it's to support this sort of notion of phrasebook and grammar and, and the bogeyman word post-coordination, uh, which is often seen as a thing about snow mode that's too hard. And so generally speaking, I wouldn't ordinarily talk about this in order to avoid terrifying you. Um, however, I think it's necessary for reasons that will become clear. So first of all, what is post-coordination? And in the spirit of trying to sort of give people the, the words to talk about this whole endeavour, it probably is appropriate here. The first thing to say is it's not a new idea. It's not unique to SNOMED. It's part of the design of ICD and OPCS. You've been doing it for years, just badly. So for example, it's a bit small here, um, and also the divider doesn't help. Um, so the SNOMED code uveitis due to leptospirosis, if you look up in SNOMED and say, what's your ICD-10 map? It says, well, there isn't a single ICD-10 code. You have to record two together. One of them on their own is not sufficient. They have to be kind of inseparably bound together somehow. Uh, and they're additionally separated. One is the dagger code, which is in some way more important or it's the, the fundamental pathology. And the second one, the asterisk code, is the sort of current manifestation of that fundamental pathology. Or the other way around, I forget, anyway. Um, so there are two ICD codes, aridocyclitis in infectious and parasitic diseases. And the second code tells you what that infectious disease actually is. And there are other flavours that require even more than two codes. So we've got intentional overdose by coproximal, uh, where we've got four different codes. Um, two of them tell you in slightly less detail that there's been an overdose of the two drug components of coproximal. And the other two codes are to tell you that it's deliberate. In OPCS, the same story. And at the bottom, we've got a fluoroscopic arteriography, yada yada code, single code in SNOMED. To capture that reliably in OPCS, if you ask SNOMED, what is the OPCS coding? It will say it's this collection of eight different OPCS codes um, and not any one of them on their own. So post-coordination can be thought of as conceptual Lego. You get a bucket of pieces and also some pre-assembled models um, as a sort of a migration path, but fundamentally it's, it's a bucket of pieces. Um, of different flavors, um, and there will be some organisms and some adjectives, left, right, up, down, that kind of stuff. Uh, and when you want to make a clinical utterance, you can pick one of the 300, 400,000 pre-canned models that exist in SNOMED, or you can assemble one never seen before from the pieces that are available, um, such as this. So you could take the, the code for it's a procedure, another one for it's being done by open access, there's a kidney involved, a lesion, and some destruction going on. And we can take those pieces and put them together in a certain order to make it clear that we're destroying the lesion, not the kidney. Um, and either pass them around as a set of pieces, but with the structure explaining exactly how they fit together. Or in some cases, SNOMED will say, actually, I've already got an identifier for that particular model. And this is one where there is an identifier. But those two representations are interchangeable. And I can take either the unique identifier that I get back from SNOMED or the more richer decomposed version and put that in something even more complicated. So here we've got our open destruction of renal lesion, either the unique identifier or the bit before it. And we've stuck it on a platform that says there's some kind of situation going on involving this. It's been done in the past electively, not urgently, to this patient, not their mother. Um, and that doesn't exist in SNOMED as a single code. Sorry? 
no, true, I could do, I could plug it in, yeah. Um, so, yep. So we've got that, um, which we can make as an expression. Um, but if we do that, then how do we render it to screen? There's no off-the-shelf term. So that piece of text in black and white, I have to, you have to make by some process. When might you want to post coordinates? Well, um, at the moment, there are some codes in SNOMED for family history of a number of popular diseases, but by no means all of them. And so in many cases, if you wanted to say there is a family history of this condition, you would need to bolt on the code for family history with the code for the condition. And left and right, you can do. I just didn't in the previous example. Um, if you wanted to be more specific about which side of the family was the family history on, you'd certainly start to need to use post-coordinated values as ways to combine these things. Um, if you want to make the difference between it's a past history of a condition or a future state I'd like to achieve, or just there's some risk that they might get this, that's all in the post-coordination territory, as are all of these values for statuses of how likely is the diagnosis, where is the procedure in the life cycle of, man of doing it, a bunch of others. All of these value sets um, are sort of post-coordinating sorts of stuff. The ones in green are supported by SNOMED now, uh, and also the ones in orange and the others less so. But if you're going to do that kind of expression building, you need a very different kind of user interface, or there's an opportunity to build a very different kind of user interface where you put together the pieces. Uh, and, and the user interface needs to be slightly predictive to know which pieces might be relevant given some clues as to where you want to start the conversation. You need a way to represent and pass around the, the particular arrangement of the pieces that you have arrived at to make it clear you're destroying the lesion, not the kidney. Um, and so we have this kind of syntax that's part of the Snowbed standard for describing, in this case, a history of elective percutaneous destruction of mitral valve vegetation, for which there is no code in Snowmed, I'm pretty sure at the moment. Um, and that gobbledygook underneath, which is sort of reasonably human readable-ish, um, is, is one version, and the serialization at the bottom is directly equivalent, but that's how you would pass this thing around as a Snowmed expression. But that's kind of useless, and this is where Snowmed tries to go beyond what was possible with the dagger asterisk and those sorts of formalisms from, from the, the late 80s, is how do I tell that this thing is a kind of cardiac procedure. What's the logic, what's the reasoning process that will give me that result? If I want all patients who've had elective cardiac surgery, how am I going to make sure I get this back? Because there's nothing in it that says it is. And because it's a new code, it doesn't exist at the moment within SNOMED's reporting taxonomy. So how does that happen? And that's the extra bit that SNOMED tries to put in. And the reason all this matters is because you may have already spotted that some of the characteristics that are offered by SNOMED look pretty similar to some of the stuff that's available in FHIR. Here, for example, is rather too small, but the slides are available afterwards, the condition resource as currently published on the FHIR website. And within it, there's things like, well, there's a, there's a slot for the code. Um, what is the condition? So this, this is kind of where the SNOMED code goes. But there's also a slot for, well, is this diagnosis provisional, differential, confirmed, refuted, entered in error or unknown, text. There's a severity slot. At the bottom, there's a body site. So there's quite a lot of duplication of the scope of what can be said in a fire uh, condition resource um, as what can be said within a SNOMED expression statement. And that causes some problems when it comes to the kind of the, um, the formal classification bit I mentioned earlier. Here, for example, are three um, plausible uh, data entry screens to say that a patient has suspected liver cancer. Um, and this is sort of a restatement of stuff we've seen yesterday, that there are clearly three different levels, arbitrary choices of how you bind bundle things together, how much you decompose it, really. On the right-hand side, it's a single code. On the left-hand side, there are three separate pieces. And in the middle is our halfway point. And we can pass those around um, using the current, um, we can populate those pieces as SNOMED codes and we can populate fire resources with those. So here are those um, three pieces. With the added addition, I've, I've sort of added in from the fire thing, I've put in a value for severity. Interesting question is, is it possible to have a non-severe malignant neoplasm of liver? If I had, to, if I would send around two fire um, resources, one was malignant neoplasm of liver on its own, no severity specified, and one was severe. Are they different clinically ever? 
so how do we tell, and there's a, a fourth one at the bottom, how do we tell that these three are in fact all the same? To you and I and the clinician, they're all the same thing. But to a machine, they're structurally and syntactically and textually different. So what is the device that says, no, actually, they're all the same thing? And the bottom example, we've now got a more specific hospital diagnosis. It's specifically a, a liver adenocarcinoma. Again, we've got this slightly dubious, what does severe mean? But we've also got a statement that the body site involved is some piece of the lung. So what is that? Is that a data error? Is that nonsense because liver cancer happens in the liver? Or is that some way of saying it's a, it's a metastasis? And if it is, was the primary in the lung and it's metastasized to the liver or the other way around? How do I know? It's ambiguous in that representation. And the same happens with, with medication. So we can, um, when Michael goes off to his um, chemist to buy his uh, paracodol for his headache, um, there is a fire uh, medication resource which can be populated with SNOMED codes, but in fact all of the stuff I've pulled out here in red is already inside SNOMED as part of its own unbundling of the thing at the top. So if we're just doing an unbundling of SNOMED to populate the fire template, you might ask why you're introducing duplication at best. If it's not a duplication, if you can populate those independently of what SNOMED says paracodal 8500 is, do we have to worry about when there are instances of disagreement between who says what is the ingredient? And all of this kind of matters when you start to try and use the codes in the context of allowing the machine to help us apply the stack of guideline paper to the stack of stuff on the left. So here, for example, is um, the sp uh, specific product characteristics for cocodamol uh, as published by the BNF. Uh, and it says, as is always uh, currently in human readable text, hepatic function impairment is a well, not for absolute contraindication, but generally advise not giving paracetamol to patient people whose livers don't work that well. So how is an interaction checker going to warn Michael that maybe he shouldn't be taking or his, his, uh, buying this particular medication if he's got a suspected liver cancer diagnosis? And the answer is that there are third-party suppliers who write these rules in, time, in terms of whatever coding system we use. And at the moment, um, one of the main suppliers of such systems now says if they were trying to identify who has liver, um, hepatic liver um, impairment, they would um, be looking for one of roughly 1,000 SNOMED codes, in the middle of which, highlighted in red, tiny font, is the code malignant neoplasm of liver. But if we had sent this instead, it won't fire, because in this big list of codes is not suspected malignancy. I'm certainly not going to say that every single possible malignancy is a contraindication for paracetamol. Um, so I, in order to get the result, I'd have to find a way to take that resource or that clinical statement at the bottom, present it to some magical engine, which would say, oh, actually, that's the same as malignant neoplasm of liver, and that is in the list. And when you drop SNOMED expressions, the sort of full-blown things, into a fire template, um, then there is a risk that the notion of semantic uh, interoperability ends up on the bonfire. Um, so here we have a code which is in SNOMED. Um, it was put in the request of Kaiser Permanente. So it's building out from the clinical notion of a, an acute severe exacerbation of mild persistent allergic asthma. There is a pre can SNOMED code for that particular phenomenon. But I've built out from that a little bit in order to say that the allergic component of it is specifically due to cow's milk protein. But even without that, there are two different severities in that statement. We've got mild persistent asthma and severe exacerbation. The current fire resource only allows you to have one severity value. There are also two body sites for this thing that, that's happening. And again, you're only allowed, you're allowed as many body sites as you like in the fire resource, but then it becomes very unclear what's bound to what. Um, similarly, um, another example, so there are a few uh, prescribable products where the contents of the box as delivered to the patient contain two products in two different formulations. So here's a very popular one, the Caniston Combi, contains both a pessary and a cream. The fire resource says you're only allowed one formulation. So is this a pessary or a cream? It's not allowed to be both. Um, so it's, it's a kind of a naive <coughs> representation that works in 80% of cases, but there are always cases where it, it doesn't fit. And unfortunately in medicine, they're often the common ones, like this one. So there has been work over the last nearly 20 years, I would say, to try to manage this gap 
in who is representing which bits of the knowledge, which bits belong in the information model, which bits belong in the terminology model, should there be overlap, and if there is, how do we manage it? Um, and so there's been some pushback from uh, Snowman International at uh, what the fire resource says should be the binding. So for example, in the condition resource for fire, on the left-hand column it says the slot for code, the main diagnosis, can be anything in SNOMED from underneath the clinical finding or disorder concept. And the pushback from SNOMED International is say, well, that's not quite true because you have a completely different resource design if it's an allergy or if it's an adverse reaction um, uh, or if it's um, tumour staging. So presumably you don't want those. So there's a rather more specific binding on the right-hand side, but that's only beginning to scratch the surface of this particular problem of overlapping um, post-coordination. So the take-home points, the purpose of codes is fundamentally, from where I come from, to enable interoperation between the human being and the machine reasoner, the algorithm, the risk scoring tool, the thing that decides what to put on the summaries page, that actively manages that huge tower of paper information to give you what you need today, based on some understanding of what's actually in that stack of paper. Triggering, counting, filtering, abstracting, aggregating. It is therefore unlike ICD for good reason. It's a very different structure. Um, out of the box, ICD on disk is a few kilobytes. Out of the box, on disk, SNOMED is a few gigabytes. And the reason for all of this is that SNOMED is fundamentally about that fourth step in Bob Wachter's interoperability goals yesterday, which is to change, and it's no point counting what's going on and, and finding business intelligence about what doesn't work in healthcare. If you have no lever to pull to change things, we need to be able to change what's about to happen, have the computer wave its hand like Clippy in the old office and say, you know, have you thought about this as an action? Not just passively record it once it has so we can bill for it. That's the world we need to move to. And in primary care, substantially already have. Um, primary care physicians are, are besieged by uh, often cough related nagware to say, you know, this patient's on my diabetic register, uh, but you don't seem to have checked their blood pressure in living memory. Uh, and by the way, if you don't, you won't get paid. Um, so that, that's the world of the future, really. Naive SNOMED implementations that treat it as being just like ICD or OPCS will make data quality and actionable interoperability, to borrow Bob Wachter's words, worse, no doubt about it. It is possible to consider a world where a messaging format, fire, whatever comes after it, work in harmony because they are mutual profiles of some overarching knowledge representation system that can be reasoned over, where you can work out, is this complicated structure some kind of cardiac open electric procedure? Um, but they're not going to work in harmony, uh, and we won't get to stage four of Bob Wachter's dream unless we manage this outstanding problem of the overlap, which, as I say, um, has been on the agenda uh, and an unsolved problem for at least 20 years. The basic problem boils down to how do I detect equivalence when different arrangements of the same pieces are, in fact, the same? And how do I determine subsumption, by which I mean when one thing is a subtype of some more general querying category? And at the moment, the only place where that sort of Dr. Spock formalism exists is, in fact, SNOMED. That's the only one on the table right now. There may be others in future. SNOMED is by no means perfect and not the end of the road. Um, but we're not going to be able to work out what we really need until we start using this sort of technology in anger. A final part, one of the other sort of problems that bedevils and besets us is we are unfortunate in not being in a greenfield world. We have 20 or 30 years of brownfield data collected in multiple systems who took very different, often not terribly principled decisions about information models um, versus terminology models and the like. Um, and one of the holy tenets is all this stuff, all this unprincipled chaos, must be possible to bring over into whatever shiny new, totally logical formalism we design for the future. And in my general experience, it's usually impossible to impose order on the chaos. Um, and, and so there has to be, somebody will say, well, we'll do what we can, but the perfection in this, to be able to basically change all four wheels of the car without stopping it, 
or bits falling off is not possible. And that's not a technical problem, that's a clinical safety and migration problem for someone to bite that bullet and say, some of that stuff we have to draw a line under. It's not going to be possible to move it over. Um, some slides, some resources. Um, SNEMED has a lot of training materials, some courses. There's an entire book of 244 pages about how to fit SNEMED and fire together, which I'd probably violently disagree with, which I read it, um, but it's there. Um, uh, and um, there's stuff we're very keen to provide support and advice um, and, and pop up at events like this to try and, and fight the corner of knowledge representation. And, and for, for me as a background in academic AI, SNEMED and information models are two supposedly complementary parts of how do we represent the semantics, our knowledge, for the benefit of the machine primarily, not each other. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you so, um, thank you so much, Jeremy. That's um, an amazing walkthrough. And I hope that has not created more headaches, but for me that it just goes to show you that there are technical solutions, but there's a lot of leadership and knowledge in the domain that needs to manage that complexity. And it's not about specifying your procurement document, do you support SNOMED CT? Um, 